All right, so Relic did drop this bomb of a document. <clears throat> um, like today or yesterday, I think it was. Uh, where they basically just... They are very transparent here uh, with what we're going to have uh, at launch. Which I think is good, you know, they're transparent with what we got. Um, there's some bad news in here, there's some good news too, but... We'll just read through it. Uh, so, of course, February 23, we know this, uh, release date. And on day one, like on launch, we'll of course have all of this single player stuff. We've got two campaigns. And of course, all these uh, skirmish settings that we're kind of got grown used to, you know, in RTS games. Uh, which is very nice. It looks like they're going way deeper here than for say Co2. You had very little. You can actually change very little, right, in a custom game in uh, in Co2, um, compared to games like Age of Empires. You know where you can change like basically every parameter. So I think that's really cool um, for the, the the skirmish and the single player lads. But they also talked a lot about multiplayer here. Um, so yeah, four factions, of course, we knew this. Uh, 12 battle groups. Uh, so that's three battle groups per faction. Um, and of course, we know that battle groups are way deeper than uh, than commanders, right? They're, it's just a, a lot more stuff in a battle group than there is in a commander. And we can see here also the, the names. So you can kind of see the themes here. You got US Airborne, Armored, and Special Operations. Uh, for Ver, you got Luftwaffe. Mechanized and Breakthrough. For the Brits, we got Indian Artillery, Armored Support, Air and Sea. Um, very vague, but hopefully we'll get more news about this as we get closer. Uh, for DAC, we got Armored Support, Italian Combined Arms and Italian Infantry Battle Group. So DAC seems to be getting a lot of uh, Italian stuff, which is kind of cool. Uh, we don't really get that with the Ver. So interesting there, I think. Uh, we got over 120 playable units. I have no idea how much this actually is, to be honest. It's, is this a lot? I don't know. How many unique units did uh, Co2, for instance, release with? I have no idea. I assume it's like way less than this, though. I don't even know if there's 120 unique units in Co2 today. Uh, with all of the DLCs and all of the factions and the battle groups. I don't even know if there's 120. So I think this is a huge amount, probably. Um, and we also got 14 multiplayer maps, which I don't know, people have been telling me it's a lot, but if you break it down per game mode, like it's like maybe three maps per game mode, and then you start realizing that, yeah, that's not, it's not a, not a lot of maps, but I'm also not worried about this. Like most of the maps we got in Co2, for instance, they're all community made. Uh, so they're going to be expanding this with community made maps. And it's also something they're covering here, modding support, we can create maps. Uh, at day one uh, so I really think this is like moot it's going to be like 14 for maybe a couple months and then they're going to you know uh, rotate maybe uh, the, the, the ones that people don't like and maybe get some map patches and of course DLC will probably also bring more maps down the line but I'm also expecting community maps to make it into the pools so I'm not really worried about this but 14 no it's not a lot of maps um, but I also think it's like, ah, they could have released this with four maps, one for each game mode, and, you know, it would probably be about the same. So, you know, at least we get 14. Co versus AI, this is basically a single player. Um, but yeah, you can do it like similar in uh, the way you queue up for multiplayer, you can queue up versus AI, just like we could in Co2. Um, custom games. Uh, custom mods from the Steam Workshops, very nice that it's integrated, it makes it very smooth, you don't need like launchers and all that yada yada that you need in other games. Um, so I think it's cool that to keep it close to the Steam Workshop, makes it very easy to install and download and upload modes. Uh, you don't need like third party websites etc. They're also talking about like the uh, custom games here, and some examples of things to change. Victory points, yada yada. Uh, probably a lot more, I would assume. I mean, we've kind of seen this in the past where they've showcased a bit, uh, like mistakenly. Uh, so we know there's a lot more uh, shit we can change. Yo, it's blocks. 
Um, yeah, modding support, like I mentioned, maps uh, and scenarios, which I guess is like single player. You can probably like rig it so that uh, certain things happen, um, you know, just like a, a campaign mission, um, I assume. So you can do like triggers and shit. Uh, game modes, very nice. <clears throat> And tuning packs, which is more like, you know, balance packs or whatever. Uh, so very nice, I think. Really nice to have this on launch, means people are gonna start working on this, like, straight away. Which means we'll probably get them way faster than we'll get the DLC and stuff. And it's always nice, I think, when games really embrace modding. Because that means they're usually quite confident in their, their, their product themselves. Because usually DLC and further content is going to be... Uh, you know, that's going to be competing with this. Like, the devs are going to be competing with this free shit with their DLC, which hopefully will make, you know, the the, the, the quality of everything be better, uh, including the DLCs. Then we're talking features and systems, and here there is some uh, some negative news, not gonna lie. Um, but we'll, we'll walk through it all, it's quite a bit. Uh, so 40 main missions, we got the tactical pause, you know, the pause that you can queue up commands in. Uh, tactical map, they are, of course, it's going to be there on release, uh, which is very popular. We can zoom in a bit, I guess, so you guys can read. Um, K-mapping, this is good, we kind of expected this. Hotkeys, so we can change them, finally. Good shit. Uh, WAST camera control, for those who want WAST. Um, ping system, I might be surprised that's in here, but you know, it's like whatever. Uh, but yeah, indicate locations, so like different pings basically is what they're saying compared to like Code 2 where you only have one sort of ping. You can do a, a couple different pings. I would like also actually if they did something like Dota where you can like paint on the map. I think that would be really cool. Like you can, you know, paint on the map if you've not seen that. Uh, so you can like, you know, draw uh, attack lines or like circles where units can be hidden um so i wish that would also be in here but they've not really mentioned that so i, I feel like that would be a obvious go-to and a cool inclusion um social systems so uh, creating parties adding new friends report a player i'm very intrigued about this i thought it would be like same as steam but it seems we got a different social system in co3 uh, meaning, I hope not, at least, that you would have to, like, re-add your, all your friends from Steam. I would probably prefer, personally, if it was just integrated Steam. But we'll, we'll see where this goes. It doesn't really matter, anyway. Um, but yeah, important here is, of course, report a player. Uh, which I think is nice, you know, reporting has always been quite a quite a difficult task in co-games. So, um, seems it's going to be integrated with the game here, so you don't have to, like, send a mail or anything like that. Next generation, destructible environments. Uh, so open up new movements, paths for but completely compla collapsing. So we've seen this already in some showcases where garrisons have been destroyed and then you can actually ride, you know, across the destroyed lots of the, the, the garrison, right? So you can actually drive over them, uh, which makes... I, I am a bit worried actually that this might actually make maps extremely flat past like 40 minutes. Um, but we'll, we'll see about this, because uh, now, you know, when you destroy a garrison, it still remains there. It's still like a, a vision blocker. You can attack around over it, of course, but it's still there. It's still adding some some obstacle to the map that remains throughout the entire game. Um, but here, you know, we can basically, get, it, they basically have disappear. You can just drive over them. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how that actually functions. Um, tank riding, of course, I think this is... I'm worried this is mostly as a gimmick that we'll never see use in multiplayer, but we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, it might just be, you know, for the the casual uh, that likes to play single player in AI, I think. It's a cool feature, but it's like, whatever, I think. Uh, towing, this is actually kind of cool. Uh, you can tow shit, uh, which, you know, rapidly... Uh, you can rapidly redeploy stuff, and imagine if you, like, decrew your opponent's pack gun with, like, a 2-2-2. Two -two -two, and then you can tow it and steal it and tow it back to your base. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? Um, so I think this might actually have some implications uh, down the line. So that's going to be quite cool, quite fun. Uh, of course, we got breaching, uh, you know, where you can kind of enter garrisons that's already garrisoned. Um, of course, only certain units get these. As far as I know, it's like certain units that have certain like grenades or weaponry that can 
breach, but uh, I, I, I'm not really sure. Uh, I think we're just gonna have to wait and see on this. Uh, side armor, very cool. We've been asking uh, about this forever, so that's nice. Uh, we already knew this as well, this is no news. Uh, verticality, which is of course hills and mountains and basically elevation. Uh, hopefully it's done better in Ko 3 than it was in Ko 2, 2 or Ko 1, but we're gonna have to wait and see. Uh, at least they're expanding on this system. Uh, so it like nullifies cover advantage uh, if you have like elevation advantage and stuff like that. In Ko it's more like, or in Ko 2 it's more like, you know, uh, it basically just makes RNG a bitch. Um, which kind of sucks, um, but hopefully it's not the case here. Enhance Recon. So uh, we got specific units and abilities to detect threats. I mean, this isn't new, but it's like, it's in here again. So hopefully, one thing I'm hoping for is that Recon will make a larger difference in Co3, but we're gonna have to wait and see. We've seen, uh, you know, in the, the multiplayer alpha a year back from now, quite a long time ago, so hopefully a lot has changed, but still, you had like the USF, they had their scouting units that had like a, a capture bonus. So what you did was like your your rifleman went full aggression, right? And then you had your your scouting units back capping, and towards like the mid game, the scouting role, the unit role, or the, the role of that unit kind of changes, where it, instead of just back capping, you're kind of scouting with it, and then you're looking for holes in your opponent's defense to attack. Um, so very very cool units, I think you can play with them quite a. They like very, even though they're like specialized, they have many different uh, ways of playing, right? Traversable trenches, so vehicles can pass over trenches, providing more re realism with vehicle combat. Really cool, I, this one, I think. Uh, I don't think we've seen this yet, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, vehicles can pass over trenches. Really cool. Yeah, I love this. Uh, but once again, I am a bit worried here that this, together with, uh, with the destruction, means maps are going to become very flat. Uh, but you know, we'll see. Uh, Anyway, it's very cool. Uh, so yeah, skins, basically, skins. And then we have some language support. Um, I don't really care about this too much. I'll just keep mine in English. Uh, one thing I would like to see though, is if they did like native language, where every faction would talk their native language. I think that would be a very good set for immersion. Uh, and I feel like it just makes it a bit more authentic. I still remember like one of my favorite games, Call of Duty World at War. Every faction, that's not an RTS by the way, but every faction in the game, like if no matter if they're Japanese or if they're German or if they're they're English or if they're Russians, you know, they, they, they kind of talk their, their native languages and it just adds so much for the, the, uh, the um, fuck, what's it called? You know, it adds for the, the authenticity. authenticity. Immersion, yes. So, um, yeah, I'm a bit sad to not see this here. Maybe that's something we'll get in the future. So, uh, um, they've not got into specifics blocks yet. But, um, yeah, this is what they will have. And let's talk about what they will not have. Because now we're going into post-launch. So everything in this list, in this post-launch here, is stuff that they will not have on re release. Uh, so store, of course, I'm not sad about this. I don't think anyone is sad that there is no store on release. So if anything, this is a good thing. Uh, challenges. So this is some new system they're testing or doing. Uh, where you can challenge to use new tactics and strategies and provide fun goals to accomplish with while playing Co3. I'm not entirely sure how this is going to work. I, I'm assuming it's like you can get like some in-game currency or something if you finish a challenge and the challenge can be maybe like, you know, uh, win a game with partisans or something like that. Uh, that's what I assume this is, but I have really no idea because uh, I don't think they've talked about this before. But I, I assuming it's more than just daily. I assume it's more than just daily, daily things to do, you know. I assume it's a bit deeper than that. So it's like challenges. You can uh, do a certain build or a certain strat. And if you win a game, you can get some reward. Yeah, hopefully it's a bit more than that, Mixu. Hopefully it's not just Steam achievements, because Steam achievements are honestly quite boring. Uh, so hopefully it's more like integrated with the game where you can like, 
you can maybe get some special cosmetic for finishing a really difficult challenge uh, during a small time span, right? So it might be like, oh, uh, tune in uh, this week, we have a very hard challenge, and then you only have that week to finish the challenge, and then you can maybe like get a, a very cool skin for completing the challenge or something like that. That's what I'm hoping this is, but I don't know. Um... Yeah, it's for the store. Wait, does it say that? Oh, it does. Okay, cool. Kill to 200,000 meters from the game. Hopefully, it's not that stupid. Hopefully. Yeah, so ranked seasons. This is good for future. I don't think anyone expected this for uh, post or uh, for launch, but there it's in here. Uh, so like down the line we'll have different seasons of ranked probably they will uh, arrive with a new patch perhaps uh, uh, Perhaps with some soft resets as well. I think that would be cool uh, More multiplayer ads maps, of course um, But yeah, here comes some very big negatives I think replays are not going to be in the game on release and neither is observer mode and This is pretty big I'm not gonna lie. I was a bit sad when I read this um you know i'm i'm in the uh, the closed group that has uh, you know access to one build and we give a lot of feedback and we've all we're all not all of us but some of us are content creators and you know we've really been pushing for this so it is a bit sad to to see this not happen um so yeah they did. Uh, they do uh, mention here, like that they're not really happy with this decision either. Um, but you know, they they're working on it, and I, I, you know, they don't want to release a bad product. That's the thing, right? They don't want to release something that they're not happy with. So that's why they're postponing this. Uh, hopefully, they're not set any deadlines here. But hopefully, this will release. Uh, soon after and they just don't think it's going to be ready for release and then they'll just you know Maybe a couple of weeks or not weeks but months down um, But yeah, we won't have this on launch which is sad because that also means you know, it's not probably not going to be in the near future either um, But yeah, it is really sad and uh, Like they even know it's important here, you know, it's a critical part of reviewing and sharing matches and you know at least they have the in-game reporting system but imagine if they didn't have the in-game reporting system. How would you report someone? If something happens in-game, there's no way for you to relive it. You can't re-watch a match unless you're recording. And even if you're recording, you're only getting that viewpoint. So if there's something cool happening on the other side of the map, you can't check it. Yeah, so uh, a very sad decision. And like Mixer says, cheating, but uh, hopefully reporting still works because they did mention the reporting that would happen um but still like you know it's 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 strange um it's very strange and there's so many old games you know that old rts games that co 3d is competing with this is like a given like you need this it's it's like this it's like they mentioned it's critical and not only for reviewing or sharing matches it's critical for having a healthy game you know um it's just very critical, uh, so it is sad to not see this. I think this is a bit of a bomb, and probably the the biggest like negative thing I've heard so far about Co3. Um, so very sad to see this. And they're also talking about expansion one, which I believe is part of if you pre-order the what's it called, the premium. Um, I'm not entirely sure. The the premium edition, the, the the one that's not the standard edition, you get this for free. But they are saying here that it's uh, single player focused, so no multiplayer on in expansion in expansion one. So that's nice, I guess. Uh, we don't want like instant multiplayer stuff that just breaks balance, because I'm I'm sure they're gonna be busy balancing this uh, for the coming months, and they, it will stay fresh no matter what. With so many new units, so many new factions, you know, it will stay fresh. We're not gonna need new multiplayer content, like new units and stuff very fast, I don't think, so. Yeah, and uh, new exciting and limited time game modes. Limited time game modes. This makes me think, like, limited time maybe they can you know do something with the uh, challenges here 
Uh, I don't know what other type of games you guys have played, but if you played like League of Legends, for instance, they got the the, ner uh, the Earth Earth game mode that they did for like a month or so, which was so cool. Uh, basically, that did was it just removed cooldown on all the the champions. Uh, and all of the champion abilities w became free so it's like it's so cool to see this um, like imagine um, some insane game modes right like you can imagine anything like again uh, no cooldown on any ability and unlimited munitions how would that look like that would be a very fun game mode and stuff like that you know where you can kind of just fuck around and have tons of fun uh, you can have a bit of a drink you know not take it too seriously so uh, I think this is really cool yeah that is everything they went over but yeah i think this is probably the the largest news and it is negative for sure <laughs>